Hello everybody! Since Foundry VTT has been fully released for about 5 months now, I wanted to update some of my earlier basics videos to reduce confusion and give people a better introduction to Foundry. This basic series is a playlist and will walk you through how to use Foundry as a GM. If you're a player, I've got a player's guide just for you that will be linked in the description. If there's a big update to any of the topics in this playlist, I'll record a new video and replace the old one with it while leaving the old one up on the channel for posterity. So if you're watching this playlist, you can rest assured that pretty much everything you'll see should still apply to the current version of Foundry, even if it's a bit old. Be sure to check for a pinned comment below each video because I'll put any important info or changes down there. I also release videos covering what's new in Foundry as big versions are released, so feel free to watch those as well. If you want to get right into downloading and installing Foundry, please feel free to skip to the next chapter using the seek bar. Before doing that, I want to give a quick rundown on Foundry VTT, like how much it costs and how you can use it before we get into the actual installation process. First things first, Foundry VTT is a one-time purchase coming in at $50, and only one person in your group has to buy it. That means a player could buy it for the GM, or the GM could buy it for themselves, or everyone could chip in to purchase a single license, and after that, everyone could connect to it for free. If you run multiple games, or one of your players runs a game on another night, that's no problem because you can have a world for each one of your games. So long as the games don't run at the same time, you're all good as far as the license is concerned. If you want to avoid paying for hosting, the way it works is that someone in the group runs the Foundry VTT application on their computer. It doesn't even have to be the GM. A player could run it, log into their normal player account, and then the GM can log into their GM account to control everything. Of course, you will, only want, uh, you will only be able to connect to the world when the player is running the application and their computer is on, and you'll have to trust them to not look at the maps and the tokens that you're uploading, but if you have a bad connection and trusted players, this can be a good solution. If you've got multiple GMs in your group, each world can have a different GM, so you can control your world as you see fit. If you're interested in having your game online all the time, then hosting in the cloud is cheap and easy and has the benefit of your game being available to everyone all the time to log in and update things on their character sheet or to review their notes. It's also helpful for people with poor internet connections because they don't have to serve the maps, music, and token art to all of their players like they would if they were running it on their own machine. You can host it on a VPS, AWS, or using a turnkey hosting provider like The Forge, Foundry Server, Molten Hosting, or another host that's on the Foundry Partnership list linked down below. These hosts will handle all of the complicated stuff for you for a pretty reasonable fee of about 5 bucks a month. Be sure to check out my video on The Forge, which will also be linked below if you're considering giving it a try. You can buy Foundry at foundryvtt.com and follow along afterwards to get it installed and running. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at downloading and installing Foundry. Once you're logged in on foundryvtt.com, click on your username in the top right of the page. From there, click on Licenses in the left-hand side of the page, download the latest version of Foundry for your system, and copy, your, and copy down your license key. Don't worry if it says Pending, that just means that you haven't activated a copy of Foundry with that license key yet. You can download and run the installer now and enter your license key when prompted. One thing to note is that if you're on Windows, you might get a pop-up saying, Windows protected your PC, without any option to continue. Tap the More Info link in the window and click Run Anyway. After opening the program, you'll be greeted with Foundry's main window, which consists of the game worlds, game systems, add-on modules, configuration, and update software tabs. Before we can really get going with creating our world, though, there's two things we should do. Let's go to the configuration screen and enter an administrator password. This makes it so you have to enter a password before Foundry will let you start a game and can help prevent someone from launching a world when you don't want them to. Lastly, we'll want to take a look at the user data path field. That's a scary name, but it just tells us where all of Foundry's data will be stored, like our worlds, users, maps, etc. So knowing where that is and how to get there will be a special tool that helps us later. On Windows, you can also right-click on your Foundry icon in the start bar and select Browse User Data to open right up to it. On a Mac, you can open Finder, click on Go in the top menu, then Go to Folder, and you can paste in the User Data Path and then press the Go button to access it. 
To save the password we just set, uh, or to save the password we just set, we'll need to click Save Changes and accept that Foundry will close, and then we can reopen it. Enter our administrator password for the first time, and then we can keep going. Next up on our to-do list is to install a game system that Foundry can use to understand our world. We'll be using Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition because that's what I play, but there are systems for a bunch of other games like Pathfinder, Shadowrun, Fate, and more. We can take a look at all of them by going to the Game Systems tab and hitting Install System. You can scroll through the list or start typing up here to find your system quickly. I'll also have a link to Foundry supported systems in the uh, description. Now it's time to jump back to the Game Worlds tab. Down here we can see that we've got an Install World and a Create World button. The Install World button gives us the ability to install pre-made worlds in Foundry that are configured with everything you need to run a specific adventure. Currently there are options for Clash of the Cobalt Cauldron and The Secret of the Poor Veneer. Let's close this window though and finally hit Create World. We'll get a new window where we can enter our world title. The world title can be whatever we want and can include spaces and all kinds of fancy characters. The data path field, though, will be used in the URL structure of the game, so uh, we want to use basic text characters here and replace spaces with dashes. Choose your game system, which in my case is the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, and that's all you have to set to be able to create your world. If you're curious about the other settings, though, the background image field will let you set a background image for the page that your players will see when they're logging into your game. You can also set when your next session is as a friendly reminder to your players, though it won't actually do anything or stop them from canceling at the last minute. If you're like me, you'll also enter a long-winded world description that people aren't really interested in. Now just smash that create world button and we're good to go. You can always go back and edit those settings, other than the game system and data path fields at least, by clicking edit world. You'll see that now there's a Reset Active Modules checkbox, which will deactivate any modules that you've got running in your world if they're causing you trouble. You can also reset your user access keys, which will get rid of your player's passwords in case they forget them. We'll leave that be for now since we don't have any users or modules, and hit Update World, and we can now launch our world by clicking the Launch World button. Now that we've configured Foundry VTT, installed our game system, and created our world, it's almost time to actually join it. Before we do that, we can see our list of players and enter an access key for the selected user. We're the game master, but there's no access key set by default, so we can leave it blank. Then we've got the game details section that shows when our next session is and how many current players are connected, as well as our world description over here. Then there's the return to setup button. If we enter our administrator password from earlier, we can then click return to setup to quickly get back to our main screen. This password will prevent our players from being able to get back to the setup screen and changing our settings. Now let's go to Select Player and click Game Master. Like I said, there's no access key necessary because we haven't set one for the Game Master account yet. The administrator password we set up earlier is different and is for protecting the Foundry application, not our specific user. Then hit Join Game Session and we're in. If you want to get back to your login screen or your setup screen, you can navigate to the last tab in the right hand sidebar and click log out at the bottom or return to setup. We'll click return to setup so we can take a look at the update software tab now. Over here we can select the kind of software updates we want to get. Let's leave it as stable and leave the beta testing up to other people. You can click check for update to see if there's any new versions and if there is you'll get a window telling you about what the new features are and uh, which you can accept and then install the update. If we jump to the game systems tab, we can also easily check for updates for it, and if we had any modules installed, we could do the same for them. That should cover just about everything that you should know about uh, that you should know when setting up Foundry. In the next video, in the next video, we're going to go over creating your first scene, adding a map, and setting up the grid. So I'll see you in the next one.